Hello again. Welcome back to Mr. Drew Paints with you. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Today I'll be painting a master copy of an ear from one of Carl von Maher's portraits. Here are my colors. They're pretty much the same as they have been. I've added light red, which also uh, looks very much like Terra Rosa. It's a very cool neutral red. And most of the skin tones I do in here, I'm using the light red rather than the naphthol, which the naphthol is kind of a synthetic substitute for cadmium red. I've mentioned in other videos that you usually don't need really intense colors for painting, painting skin tones, so that's why things like the neutral yellow in yellow ochre and the neutral red in light red or terra rosa work so well for portrait painting. If you're not familiar with Carl von Maher's work, I would highly recommend checking him out. He is fantastic. Uh, he lived and worked about the same time as artists like Sargent and Soroya. He was born in 1858 and died in 1936. He was born here in Wisconsin and eventually moved to Germany where he taught and did his paintings. Just a little bit of a drawing tip for you here as you work on an ear. You can usually divide it into thirds. There's that center bowl of the ear and it's about the same height as the top third and bottom third. So if you divide it in thirds, you should be able to find the top and bottom of that center bowl, that hollow spot in the center of your ear. The Museum of Wisconsin Art up in West Bend, Wisconsin has a large collection of Carl von Maher's works, including this painting that I'm working from here. This was a portrait he did of his mother and I think it's one of my favorite pieces I've seen from him. Uh, he did a number of drawings and paintings of his mother and his father and they are so well done. They are, they are excellent. If you get up to the Museum of Wisconsin Art in West Bend, Wisconsin, uh, they usually do have one of his largest paintings on display. It's, I think, about 20 feet wide and maybe 12 or 15 feet high. It's a, a big procession that he painted. That's also very impressive to look at. Here, unfortunately, I had already blocked everything in, only to realize that my camera had shut down, so I had to do some fixing with that and get that back up and running. Uh, so I just wiped out the ear. I left everything else blocked in, the cheek and the hair in the background. Uh, so here you're, you're at least seeing the entire ear being painted. There's just a little bit of that skin tone stain left over after I wiped it down. But same process as usual. Uh, I draw it out first and then I start with my darkest values and work up to my mid-tones and then my lighter tones. I've actually done a master copy of the eyes from this portrait of Carl von Maher's mother. Uh, I think I have that. My folks might have that somewhere in a closet or something like that. Uh, but magnificent work. It's like I said, it's up there with any of the other world-class artists. And it's really it's fun. The more you get to research artists, you realize you really don't know that many. There's so many out there. Uh, you know, currently and from the past that are just amazing. So get out there, do some research, find some of these amazing artists and you, you may uh, uh, stumble into a hidden treasure. I chose this ear because of its clarity, um, because of the colors it has, and because of the definition. A lot of ears, even in famous portraits, are kind of obscured. There may be the unsung hero of the face. 
uh, usually the hair or a hat is over them or they're just not super clear. But this was a beautiful ear. Here I'm going to introduce you to a tool that I've been using for the net last few years and it's very, very helpful. So I put a stroke down I wasn't happy with and there you see that little rubber squeegee tool. You should be able to find those at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. And a long time ago when I first started painting, if I put a stroke down I didn't like, I would just keep trying to pile new paint over it to change the value or change the color. Uh, but when you do that, the previous layer of color just influences what you're putting down next. So it's best to stop, scrape it down, wipe it out. And for those tiny little areas like the top of the ear, using that rubber squeegee tool really allows me to get in that tight area, just lift out the paint I need, and then I can go back with clean paint and then get the color that I want on top of there. You could use a Q-tip or sometimes I'll use the back end of my brush handle with a paper towel wrapped over it and just wipe out little areas that I need to repaint. But as far as an oil painter, uh, that is that's probably one of my most valuable tools just to be able to lift out uh, those little detailed areas that I need to rework without letting the previous layer influence it. And speaking of painting tools, I haven't talked much about my paints or brushes yet. Uh, I will do a video on that eventually. But here, um, I'm using some small little flat brushes. I got a pack of like a dozen of these brushes from Hobby Lobby for about six bucks. They're not even in the artist's brush section. They're by the school supplies. Uh, so as long as you have a brush that holds its shape well, even if it's not very expensive, uh, it works works really well. So these are like that golden Taclon, uh, kind of a nylon brush, little flats. And I really like using them uh, because they do hold their shape well. And also they're so inexpensive that if they get, you know, kind of fuzzy or lose their shape, which oil brushes inevitably do, uh, I'm not out a whole lot of money there. You may also notice as I'm painting, sometimes I'll change up the grip. Uh, sometimes I'll paint with the brush almost like it's a pencil, and then sometimes I'll hold it overhand. Uh, and whatever hand you are, if you're right-handed or left-handed, every painting is going to have a few sections where it's just not really comfortable to get into that area with your, your strong hand. So holding the brush in a different manner and being able to come at that shape from a different side can be very helpful. Once I had found that after my bl first block in that the camera didn't record that, uh, my heart kind of sank and I was a little bit discouraged about that. But I figured, no, I, I gotta press on, I gotta do this. And I was actually surprised, pleasantly surprised, by how quickly it went the second time. And everything just flowed really well. There's stories of art teachers from the past where they'd come up to a student, they'll look at the student's work, and maybe it's a very well done drawing or painting, but the art teacher will take a rag and wipe it out and say, do it again. And that, that sounds pretty cold, to be honest. I don't think I would do that to my students. Um, but the teachers would say, if you can do it once, that might be an accident. But if you can do it twice, that really shows mastery. Um, so don't be afraid if you're doing something in oil paint and it's not the way you want it, or maybe you have an accident like I did where my camera stopped recording. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to wipe it off and start again. Uh, you did it once, you will be able to do it again, and you'll probably be surprised at how quickly it goes, and it may even look better than it did that first time.
I really do like painting and drawing ears. When I began as an art student, I know I was very intimidated by them. But don't, don't be afraid about anything that you're trying to draw or paint. Just break it down to those basic elements of shapes, values, edges, and colors, and uh, you should be able to tackle it. Um, sometimes it takes a few tries, but don't give up. Don't, uh, don't defeat yourself before you start. Uh, tell yourself you can do it, and you will. I love the interplay of shapes and edges and values in the ear. Uh, because there's a little bit of a wax content on the ear, uh, you're going to get some of those fun highlights and reflections. But then you also get those very deep shadows as well. It's a bit of a maze with all the cartilage shapes, but as long as you slow down and take your time, you can figure out where they overlap and how to get those shapes in your painting. So here we do the final peel to reveal that clean edge again. So some things to look for with the ear. Um, I would say color-wise, usually it's fairly reddish. Uh, there's usually more blood at the uh, ears, so that makes it a little bit more red. But there is some cool tones there on the cheek, if you see. We get that highlight in the center bowl of the ear. And then look at those nice, crisp, or dark shadows with the sharp edges that really helps set the cartilages apart so thank you so much for watching i uh, hope you enjoyed this and hope you have a great day